everybody, it's Melissa here and it's been a while so I wanted to come at you with a new video and something that I thought would be practical for a lot of you out there. Um, recently, this week, I am cooking for not one, not two, but three meal trains because people just keep having babies. And if they're not having babies, people get sick. And so maybe this is happening in your community and in your friend circles. And even though we're in a pandemic, there is still a lot of need out there for a meal train. And in particular, I wanted to do this video because I know a well-meaning friend who wanted to set up a meal train, but who just really didn't know the order or how it works or what have you. So here are some tools for you. I have a list. We're just going to get down to them. So my first tip for you, if you have a friend, let's say who's very pregnant or uh, has gone to the hospital or is scheduled to have a C-section, my first recommendation is create a meal train on the meal train website, I'm gonna say. Create the meal train before you need it. So this is great for pregnancies. It's also good if you hear confidentially maybe that someone is ill or um, someone's having a surgery coming up. If you have advanced warning, go ahead and set that meal train up. I, I recently explained this to someone that to have a meal train where you're gonna have a series of meals scheduled and delivered for a family so that participants in the community can help, you need someone to drive the train. So if you are the best friend, if you are the mom, if you are the teacher for that child's classroom, you might be the driver of the train. And you're gonna go into the meal train website and create the event, which is meal train for baby so-and-so or the so-and-so family, and just create it. You don't need to have all the emails, you don't need to have the dates, you don't need a due date for the baby, it's just, you're just creating it in meal train and invite the recipient. So that's my first piece of advice is just create it before you even need it, before anyone wants a meal. And then you can add passengers to the train and send that meal train link out later. Um, meal train is such a gift. It is a free website. It organizes a calendar. It sends reminders. It lets the recipient choose what dates they want meals and when they don't want meals. It lets you put in all the particulars. It's just excellent. So please don't reinvent the wheel. You don't need to keep this on a piece of paper on your calendar, just use the website. Do it in advance. Tip number two, if you know someone who is going to need a meal train delivery or a meal delivery and you're planning to cook, you can prep in advance. You can also prep in advance by asking what uh, restaurants they like meals from, what exact dishes do they order. But if you're like me and you like to cook for a meal train, and I've done a lot of videos about sample menus that I've cooked, um, you're gonna wanna just get ready. Why buy one pomelo when you can buy six pomelos? I'm, I couldn't even fit them all on this table. The pomelos were on sale at the store, people. So if there's things that you're out and about shopping for for your family, and you know in the next week or so you're gonna wanna feed somebody else, just buy double or triple or quadruple of that thing. So citrus is one, meat, things that can be frozen. I really recommend preparing in advance because then at the drop of a hat, you have what you need. The other things that I'm prepping for in advance are disposable containers that I can send the foods in, a really handy cardboard box, like the kind you get at Costco that's flat and you can lay everything in. Those are great. And then my last tip is for those of you who are like me who are frugal and you're looking to sort of save money on participating in a meal train. So if you're like me, maybe cooking something from scratch or home cooking is the way to go to keep the costs lower. Obviously, if money is no object, buy them the nice food and have it delivered. That's super luxurious too. Um, here are the things that I'm doing. I am shopping and cooking in season. This is something that I've shared with you on this channel before. It's winter now, we're buying citrus. It's holiday time now, all the baking supplies are going on sale. So I'm really shopping in season and I'm shopping my grocery circulars. I'm not looking at just one grocery circular, I'm looking at all of my grocery circulars and I'm comparing them and deciding where to go shopping. This week, I went shopping at my super cheap, amazing grocery store and I was really buying up in bulk and filling my freezer. Um, expecting that I'd be cooking for my friends. Um, the other thing is to not uh, forget about gifts that you might receive. So sometimes you can re-gift things that you're receiving. Sometimes you have a neighbor who's generous with their garden or their fruit trees. 
Like what are those things coming into your life for free? So sometimes it's citrus, sometimes it's a neighbor who has eggs. So think about what you have that you can build a menu around that is no cost to you. Buy nothing or this phenomenon of buy nothing groups happens on Facebook or on the buy nothing app. And I have four kosher chickens four kosher chickens that my neighbor gave to me. Um, I also sometimes get like random cases of milk or garbage bag of romaine. You just never know. So um, keep your eye out if things are being given away or um, somebody just has too much in their fridge and they're sharing. I scooped up four frozen kosher chickens and put them in my freezer last month and I've been saving them for two meal trains that I know are coming up. We are always buying in bulk. Um, just ask my husband. He's cleaning out the pantry and there's like 40 pounds of flour in there. So I've been baking and trying to go through, but we're, we're really saving a lot of money when we buy in bulk because we have a family and then we're cooking for other families. So we really can afford to buy that huge package of flour, that huge package of meat, etc., and just share the wealth. Lastly, if cost is an issue, you can always choose an inexpensive food to cook. I know lasagnas or pasta bakes or cooking produce that's in season like greens or a salad or um, fruit that's um, lower cost is really gonna be welcomed and anything that you deliver that's a healthy meal is gonna be appreciated in someone's time of need. Those four chickens that I have in my refrigerator, um, it's a lot of work. They're not boneless, they're not broken down. So today I'm gonna be cooking for a couple of families with those chickens. I'm going to be actually uh, boning them and preparing some of that meat for a chicken satay. The rest of the bones are going to a, into a soup pot to make chicken stock um, from those kosher chickens. And then the wings, I think I'm gonna reserve and do like a glazed chicken wing um, for another meal or for a little appetizer. Doing that work really would cut the cost even if I had bought these chickens to just do the butchering myself. So that's what's going on here. We're gonna be making curry on Christmas for someone. We're gonna be um, broiling up some salmon in January for another meal that I've signed up to do. So don't be afraid of the meal train. Don't be afraid to set up a meal train for someone that stretches a longer period than you think they need. I can tell you it will help them sleep easy knowing that healthy, loving meals are on the way. That's all, it's been a while. I look forward to seeing more of you guys in 2022. I hope you've been doing well and thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.